Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Positive Success Show. I have an awesome guest with us today. Her name is Sarah Hardery, and she's a value creation advisor and fractional COO. Uh, Sarah, it's so awesome to have you here on the show. Oh, thank you, Dom. I'm so pleased to be here. So awesome. So for everyone watching or listening, I met Sarah uh, at a co-working space in Virginia, and we just totally hit it off. Uh, I think you know, as entrepreneurs, as working moms, <laughs> we're so busy, like life is so crazy, but we're also so passionate. And the one thing that I adored about you, Sarah, when I first met you and we had that coffee, it's like, hey, let's have a coffee. You know, it was just, it was the most intense, magical, like, I think we were talking for two hours. I wasn't expecting two hours, but we just, we just clicked. And your vision for what you're doing and my vision for what I'm doing, it just, yeah, it just flowed so well. And so I'm so excited to have you here on the show and and to and to chat with you and learn more about what you do, how you do it, and also to inspire our audience, uh, folks that are thinking about taking that plunge into entrepreneurship or just thinking about, you know, living a better life, living a better professional life, especially as a working mom. Well, first of all, I have to say thank you for doing this show because um, Dom, you're just such an inspiration for me. And you round out the way I approach business and so many things that I've accomplished in the last year, you know, you really helped me accomplish. And so I just want to say thanks for that. So you've been an inspiration. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. No, so awesome. So awesome. So Sarah, can you tell us what exactly is a fractional COO and how you, (laughs) and how you came to that? Uh, Because our audience members, you know, they're, they're coming from all walks of life. And so they might not be, um, you know, too familiar, but would love to learn more about that and how you came to be that. Yeah, I would love to share that. So um, I have to confess that I was a lifelong employee. um, So not an entrepreneur uh, and basically followed all the right rules and climbed the ranks and did everything right uh, and progressed upwards in my career as far as, you know, project management or consulting and then running it essentially business operations and got to the point where I needed to make a choice between essentially a COO job, um, which would have made me travel 50 plus hours a week. But my daughter was young and I thought, I'm going to miss this. And so it was kind of this choice between do I do something that I love to do or do I spend time with the person that I love? Mm -hmm. And um, there weren't a lot of choices out there, to be honest with you. Um, the, The fractional chief executive type roles They have some for CFOs, um, maybe some for chief marketing officers. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot for COOs. Mm -hmm. And so I had to, in many ways, be a trailblazer uh, for this. And certainly as a woman, I definitely did. (laughs) Um, Yeah, definitely. Uh, It's it's funny. I didn't know what to call the job. And so I was able to get all of these URLs for your part-time COO and the part-time COO. And then I learned that it was actually called a fractional COO. Thank you, LinkedIn. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But I was probably one of the first handful of of declared fractional COOs um, out there. And in a nutshell, it's the ability to take what would otherwise be a very expensive resource. You know, a COO of an international company is very expensive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but being able to use, you know, part time of that mm. in a smaller size company, mm. the impact that somebody like me can make on a smaller size company, you know, something, you know, 50 million or less, Mm -hmm. um, it's really remarkable. Uh, To quote one of my clients, he said, how did we get you again? Wait, (laughs) how did this happen again? Which was lovely, you know, which was great. But it did mean becoming an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And if I've learned anything, it's entrepreneurial terror is real. It's yeah. absolutely real. And some days you don't feel it so much, but it's always there. It never really goes away. And this is something that I've learned from yeah. talking to other entrepreneurs. 
Oh my gosh. I know. I'm still scared every day. I was scared, scared today. I'm like, what's going to happen today? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so Sarah, in this, this fractional COO, I love this, I love this term because it, it provides a lot of flexibility and allows you to do both, you know, be there for your daughter yes. and also do work that you're highly, highly capable of doing. Um, can you, can you talk about like, cause I'm so, I'm so curious about your thoughts on this, the, the potential for this model. Oh yes. And, and I'm glad that you brought that up. So this is something that you and I have talked about yeah. a lot. Um, which is, you know, what are some of the constraints out there in the market, which ones are real and we should pay attention to them and which ones, um, don't make sense. Yeah. And if you try to test them now, you'll realize there's a better way to do something. Yeah. And I think, especially as moms, um, we would look at, okay, why do I need to be in an office between nine and five? Like there's nothing about that that makes sense mm -hmm. when you really think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so once you sort of set that aside and you realize that that construct is designed to serve somebody who does not have any other responsibilities during the day, uh, you realize that that doesn't work for probably more than half of the population. <laughs> so, <laughs> duh. Um, <laughs> So if you're, if you're somebody like me and you're sitting here and you're, you're basically working with business owners and you're saying, oh my goodness, there are so many better ways that we can do what you're trying to do. It doesn't have to be as expensive as you think it is. It doesn't have to take as long as you think it will. Then all of a sudden you've radically opened up your resource pool mm. when you let go of this idea that things have to be nine to five. And I think that really resonates with a lot of the people who are working now. Mm -hmm. And when we also look at some of the women in particular who are at the, you know, the chief executive level, um, a lot of them have, you know, either worked an entire career or they're in the sandwich generation where they've got the aging parent and they've got the child. Mm -hmm. um, nine to five does not work or appeal. But if you exclude those, those resources, that talent from the market, we're really hurting the economy overall. I mean, I, I like every now and then to kind of look at this from a macro perspective and go, this isn't about me, mm -hmm. right? This is about how do we start to elevate these smaller and medium-sized businesses who have, should have access to folks with, you know, this level of experience and expertise and don't have to engage them on a nine to five basis. So this makes sense across the board for so many people. So good. And, and you know, the way that you talk about it, Sarah, it's, it, it's, it's so, um, like I hear everything and I'm like, okay, come on, Dom, use your, use your brain, like translate everything. And what I'm hearing is that the potential is small and medium enterprises or businesses can hire folks at a fraction of the cost, still be highly efficient. And it's a win, win, yeah. win situation because you're still, you're, you're capturing the economic value that a whole entire talent pool can bring to the table um, while still running an efficient business and taking care of families. And taking care of people, absolutely and taking care of well-being. Oh, so so awesome! If there's any any CEOs or COOs or CFOs, CMOs, decision makers, <laughs> policy makers listening to this yeah. episode, like please, you know, think about different ways to to create a new system because it is like these trends of quiet quitting, the great resignation. You know, it is the great revolution as as I see it. We're shifting the way that we're working. And, and you're a clear example of that, Sarah. You're literally trailblazing the way, as as you said earlier. Like, <laughs> because if it doesn't exist, create it. And that's what I love about exactly. when, I, when I first met you. And I'm like, yes, you get it. <laughs> create, create the system and create the system in life and work in which that, that works for you, that works for you and your family. And everyone's different. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's different. I think, you know, for me, I wished that someone had already created this for me so that when I was out there looking for basically part-time, but really meaningful and challenging yeah. executive level work, it didn't exist. And so I realized that I have to create it. You know, I have to connect with entrepreneurs and business owners and 
connect them with this idea as well. And I, <laughs> again, I mean, if we, if we stop for a moment and I, I make this joke, you know, when we were in the, the shared workspace, every time I would get my cup of coffee and I would walk past the front desk back to my office, I would say, all right, it's time to go change the world. <laughs> you know, and I meant it as a joke, but yeah. I think like we really have to do this. If we stop for a moment and think, okay, I'll quiz you on this. Why do we have a 40 hour work week? Because of uh, industrialization and factory, fa working in factories, like that was designed for, for factory work. Yeah. Do, but do we really think that factory workers back then worked 40 hours a week? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they worked way more. Oh, totally. So like we've, we've created all of these things. I mean, there, there's some, there, there are schedules and ways that you need to do things. If you're a farmer, for example, yeah. and there, yeah. you know, there are different types of things, you know, where we've got shift workers in hospitals and things like that. But I mean, for goodness sakes, if you're somebody like me mm -hmm. and your job is to go in and take a look at the way a business runs mm -hmm. And this comes back to the value creation piece to look at how do we make this more efficient, yeah. profitable, how do we grow and how do we reduce the risk around the, the business itself? There is no rule that says that that takes exactly 40 hours a week and it has to be done between nine and five. It doesn't. You flex up, you flex down, oh, so and then you can really work with your clients. And then now instead of, you know, being locked down in a single job, you can help four companies, five companies, six companies. And then you can also tap into different types of resources. So if we find ourselves facing, for example, a cybersecurity opportunity, then I can go tap another, you know, female COO with experience in cybersecurity or HR, or, I mean, we need to start thinking a little bit more broadly about how to leverage the resource pool that's out there. And I think that the more flexible, open-minded business owners in, especially in like the lower middle market space, it's incredible what we can accomplish because these organizations, you have direct access to the decision maker. They're nimble. Mm -hmm. you can affect change you can see the results of it mm -hmm. it's fantastic mm -hmm. it's fantastic there's so much less bureaucracy to deal with mm -hmm. and so the the ROI or the return on investment that that they get from engaging somebody like me is fantastic and I love the work like I'm such a nerd on operations <laughs> I love it As and I admit it and and I would, I would, I, I mean, just imagining you going to different companies and helping with their uh, operations and efficiency, it makes you a better COO because you have perspective from different, it's like, wow, Absolutely. like, wow, you know, because you could be working with different, yeah, just different businesses, different cultures, diff and then you, you, you bring all that knowledge and it's so, I mean, I never thought about that. I'm like, but that's really, really cool in terms of a career, like, have, it's like you're you're like not I don't I mean you're like a taxi driver but you're like going to different places <laughs> different spaces but then you 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 gather that that information and that skill set that a person working in one company for like 30 years they just won't have that perspective or that range that range of you know being able to work in in different types of companies and cultures and communities so Wow, like that is pretty amazing, Sarah. Like you are, you are definitely onto something. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, but you know, I, I hadn't, I maybe hadn't really thought about it that way. But you know, you make a great point, which is, you know, some of our most interesting and innovative people are entrepreneurs, mm. and when you have the opportunity to work with multiple of them, okay. you learn something new and exciting from every place you you go, and so. For someone like me, I took a lesson learned from a mechanic and auto body repair shop and applied it to an uh, aircraft manual documentation <laughs> place, which then was applicable in a psychologist practice. I mean, it's amazing what we can get because what, what it really comes down to is, and this is going to, this is, I think, where you and I really you know, have traction is it's the connection of person to person mm -hmm. 
to accomplish a goal Mm -hmm. and understanding what each person needs and understanding their strengths, their limitations, preconceived notions, Mm -hmm. but really like owning up to the needs of either the business Mm -hmm. or the person or both. Mm -hmm. And then being able to make that connection, it makes everything, first of all, more fun to work with and do. (laughs) But second of all, way more successful. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's, it's, it's fantastic, Sarah. Like just, just the, the potential for this, for this idea and this model. Um, Just to share a little story with you, a friend of mine who is a, who's a lawyer uh, she she ended up staying home with the kids uh, and raising them. And her and her friend had this idea: what if we can split one job into two people? But then, and mm-hmm. we would work with each other, and we would do the work. But I, you know, it'll be twenty hours, twenty hours. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, does that exist? Like, no companies don't hire that way. Like, they would just hire. Right. So it was just it was really interesting because what you're talking about, what she was talking about, I'm just like listening to this. I'm like, yeah, there has to be, there has to be a different way moving forward. And I think what you're mm-hmm. creating, what women now are thinking about, like, how can I have both? How can I have a family and also do work that I love, you know, and it's, 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 un, it's uncharted territory. And that's what I love about it is that you're creating in your space. I'm creating in my space and together we're like learning. So again, kudos, kudos to yeah. you and all the fantastic, fantastic work and lessons learned you're, you're, you're accumulating over time. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's so funny. I've been so immersed in this mindset. Um, I forget that it's not mainstream. Yeah. Um, so it's helpful to, to talk with you about that. And I, I want to call out something that, um, you know, a special gift that you gave me. So as somebody who is in operations, you know, this is going to come as no surprise. I have a highly analytical mind uh, and I have a tendency to focus on, you know, goals and objectives and, you know, (laughs) the numbers and the data and uh, things like that. And um, the, some of the deep conversations that you and I have had around acknowledging the needs of employees, Mm -hmm. um, understanding ways to uh, show support and appreciation of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Um, All of that has been incredibly helpful and it's helped me, I think, even better build out the persona of what a fractional COO can be and do Mm -hmm. for a company. Um, and that's really helped to resonate, I think, with this, you know, this idea with other entrepreneurs. Um, so, th- I mean, that was, thank you for that. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> anytime, Sarah, anytime. Sure. <laughs> I'm just, a, I'm just a phone call away. So I, I want to, I want to go back to what you said about entrepreneurial terror is real. Can you, Oh my God. Yeah. Can you just give a few points, like, I don't know, two or three lessons learned uh, or insights or, I mean, whatever it is you want to give to someone that is considering trailblazing a path for themselves, because it's hard. We know it. And there's probably uh-huh. no role model, right? But we're becoming the role model or choosing to step into that. What would you say to them? What insights would you give them? What tips would you give them just based off your experience? How would you basically, like, how, what would you say to yourself? A year ago? Mm. Well, I would first of all say, remember your patience. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring your patience. Um, I would say not to be afraid of the passion. Mm-hmm. If something is really driving you to take that risk, to step outside your comfort zone, and for me, it really was. I was just so frustrated and quite frankly, in, you know, irate at the fact that mm-hmm. what I wanted and needed didn't exist, but it, there was no good reason for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that just drove me so much to say, okay, well, shoot, if nobody else is going to fix it, I'm going to fix it. Mm-hmm. And I think when you hit that tipping point, um, you kind of can't do anything else because it's become so strong that it, it drives your mind every single day. Um, So that's one thing I would say is, you know, if you really feel that way, embrace it, 
and go for it. The other thing I would say is um, when it, like, if you're an employee, for example, you don't know about the power of tapping into your networks mm -hmm. and building these supportive, mm -hmm. they're like friendships. They're like professional friendships mm -hmm. um, and they are not surface level mm -hmm. at all. Like one might find in a networking event. I mean, these are deep mm -hmm. desire to help each other mm -hmm. and see each other succeed. It's not in like a, a competitive way. And so build that network mm -hmm. around you. Mm -hmm. You'll know them when you meet them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to steal a line from a friend of mine, which is have this abundance mm -hmm. mindset. Mm hmm to believe that there is enough work for you and the person next to you. There's plenty of work out there. And when you give to help someone else, you know, if there's someone like you, I mean, for goodness sakes, you give right back. And so it's this, this feeling of help and support. Um, and I would say, you know, start building those networks as soon as possible yeah. and be true to yourself in them. If you find someone that is, you know, makes you feel uncomfortable, like they're taking and not giving or, you know, you know, cut, cut them loose. This isn't, yeah. these, these are, you know, this professional support network is not necessarily the same as, you know, you know, best friends. Yeah. It's, it's different. There's a, a measure of respect respect mm. and drive mm. and you'll know it when you see it and you will just respect the heck out of the other person yeah. and that's when you know you've got the right people in your circle oh so good <laughs> I love it I love it no it's good have patience don't be afraid of your passion build mm -hmm. that professional network but deep deep relationships and I think I, yeah. I mean Sarah when I like literally when I met you and I knew that I was in my purpose. It was like, you just, nat it, it's, it just naturally clicked. And I knew what you're saying right now. Like I knew I'm like, yeah. Oh, I need to be like, she needs to be in my network. Like she's awesome. Yes. Love what she yes. does, you know? And it's, and yes. you're right. It is a different, it's not like your best friend, but it's just someone that shares that passion and that drive for change. And I think that's what really yeah. attracted me to what you do is that you want to change. You want to not just change a little bit. Like you want to make a big change. And it's, yeah. and it's, um, it's bigger, it's bigger than you. And, and I get that. Like when I want to make a big change, yeah. sometimes I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to my wife and she's like, whoa, Dom, that's like really big. And I'm like, yeah, that's just how I see things. And that's just the vision I have. And, and in that right. way, it's like, you gotta be, you gotta put yourself around others that are going to support that vision and, and be part of the vision. So, yeah, you great. don't want people who are going to tell, you no. Yeah. or you can't, you know, it's, it's different. You know, we're not just yes men to each other or yes women yeah. to yeah. each other. Um, we respectfully challenge ideas, but in the supportive way to help the other person get to the very, very best mm. answer that they possibly can, because we share entrepreneurial terror. You can't tell me you don't feel it. I know you do. I know everybody does. You know, I, I talked to a friend of mine, he's very successful, you know, yeah. he's sold a few businesses, you know, many millions of dollars. And I said, you know, this is how I'm feeling. And he goes, Oh, yeah, we all feel that okay. all the time. I was like, wait, <laughs> you feel it too. Uh, and so yeah, making making that connection and trusting that connection, uh, and trusting the other person's got your back and you know, looking for people who have complementary skills and perspectives that's to it. what you have. I know you and I don't agree on everything for sure. And that's yeah. just one of the things that makes me appreciate you more. Yeah. Oh, so good. Oh yeah. Anyone watching or listening, you got to be taking notes here. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah, can you, I'm, I'm curious in terms of the mindset of the current landscape of business owners and CEOs, so this is like a kind of a tougher question, but I, I'm curious to see what you, you're going to say. What do you think needs to shift in their mind? Like, what do you think they need to, to start believing in order to make this a reality for a lot of talented women out there that want to work, but want to work not full-time, but, you know, the time that they can work? Ah, that is such a great question. Um, you know, and I think 
trying to tackle that Mm. has been a journey for me because what seems so clear Mm -hmm. to me um, is such a mind shift. I mean, there's a a community of COOs uh, and practice of COOs that, you know, the, the old guard, and they believe that you cannot be successful as a fractional COO. I completely disagree. There's this great Harvard Business Review article that talks about, you know, seven different types of COOs. And Mm -hmm. if you're somebody like me, you're a transformational COO that absolutely lends itself to either part-time or like, you know, time boxed. Yeah. Um, So learning how to speak in terms of value Mm -hmm. and value creation inside of a business. And then it becomes along the lines of, more like a consulting engagement. And I think once we start getting into the world of consulting engagements, Mm -hmm. business owners have a tendency to become a little bit more flexible in what they're expecting as far as hours go. Timing wise, um, as hard as the pandemic has been, and it's been brutal Mm -hmm. for women, Mm -hmm. um, it, I think, loosened up owners everywhere Mm -hmm. to start to think differently about work from home, Mm -hmm. flexible schedules. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's been sort of the start of a shift in this, but the challenge is going to remain. How do you um, get them to embrace it at the executive level? And that continues to be the problem. Um, And I think when we're able to clearly articulate, and so I will give this advice to any fractional executive out there. Mm -hmm. If you're able to clearly articulate what the pain point of the owner is Mm -hmm. and the value that you bring in solving it, Mm -hmm. they are less likely to demand that you be a full-time resource. Mm -hmm. So I would say talking in terms of that is going to be the best thing. And then quite frankly, you know, I think that this is going to be in many ways, a grassroots word of mouth type experience. And I talk a lot with female advisors all over the U S and I talk all over the world. And what I am trying to, uh, to build and get us to do is to have these partnerships informal mm-hmm. they don't it doesn't have to be something formal but this sort of mutual respect between different disciplines mm-hmm. so like for me to have a connection with a coach with a mm-hmm. cpa mm-hmm. an attorney a financial mm-hmm. advisor mm-hmm. because in my line of work the problems that we need to solve for business owners fall squarely into the discipline of all of these different folks yeah. and you know i like to talk about it like a wagon wheel <laughs> Like you plug Whoa. into one, plug into I'm, one. I'm literally right. I'm li- literally drawing a wagon wheel right now on my notebook. Are you? <laughs> yes. It's so it's so obvious when you think about it, right? Oh my god! So so an owner an owner plugs yeah. into one spot, and then as you're going through what you need, you realize, okay, well, I need one of these and one of these, and the most precious resource for a business owner is time. Mm. That is the most limited and precious resource that you could possibly have. So when you have these like grassroots advisor networks, Mm -hmm. the ability to refer to someone that you like working with, you have a similar perspective and mindset with, and then you can work together on, Mm -hmm. you've just saved that business owner Mm -hmm. a lot of time. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, these things make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think, you know, part of this, how do we get business owners to change their mindset? I think a part of this is let's start growing out these communities of advisors and let's start putting the word in, in different folks ears. If I, if I can, um, I will say that this has become something that I've noticed as a value creator is that when I compare a male owned business and a female owned business, same industry, roughly same size book of business, Mm -hmm. the female businesses oftentimes don't have the same revenue. 
Mm. as the male businesses, it's Mm -hmm. like less. Mm -hmm. And I realize that the old boy network still exists, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and and I'm not, I'm not trying to knock it. Right. I think we talk about this a lot as female Mm -hmm. business owners, but I also don't think that the, the way to build that up for female business owners, I don't think looks the same way. Yeah. And I think when we leverage our ability to do, have these kinds of connections, Dom, right? Like these kinds of conversations, getting (laughs) each other's back, very informal. If we shift away from having these conversations about, oh my God, I love your shirt. Where'd you get it? Um, And we go like, oh my God, I love your CPA. Can you give me her number? (laughs) Like, I know we sort of joke about this a little bit, but we're so good at this communication. And the more we start to talk about supporting each other in the business sense, (laughs) I think that is our answer to the old boy network. I think it just looks different for us as women. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. And I think, I think you're, it's, it's spot on. It's literally creating from the grassroots up what this new network is going to look like, because I, I was just on a call yesterday talking to a lot of, uh, a lot of women, women entrepreneurs. And I said, you know, there was no time in history than now that women have had this many opportunities, this much capital, this much freedom, this yeah. much technology. Like, you know, my life, like 20 years ago, I don't think I would have been able to live my life because the technology wasn't there and social acceptance wasn't there. And so the fact mm-hmm. that we're at this moment in history where like, we are literally, like you are literally, all of us, all the women right now, we're creating what's going to be the foundation for the next generation. You know, how, yeah. we, how we work, how we play, how we mother, how we, you know, how yeah. we have friends, you know, all of it. It's, and it's, and it's exciting. It's exciting and scary at the same time, but I feel so mm-hmm. uh, honored Sarah to like, to know you, because I know you are going to change the world. Like literally like your ideas are going to shift <laughs> mindsets and it'll take time and that's okay. Yeah. Like this will. is a long, this is a long game. And so, yeah. I'm here like saying, I got your back, Sarah. (laughs) Thank you. I'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) So good. So good. So Sarah, um, usually in my, in my conversations, I ask, you know, what success means to you, uh, at this Mm -hmm. time in your life, I think, you know, all of us, our, our success changes as we, as we get older, as we have more wisdom, as we change, but I'd love to, I'd love to hear, you know, as a fractional COO, a trailblazer, a mom, you know, what does, What does success mean to you today? So I, I think about this as a sort of, you know, grounding question Mm -hmm. when things feel a little out of control sometimes, which I think is true for everybody. Um, Success for me is my daughter grows up to be a healthy, happy, you know, fulfilled individual to be honest with you. I mean, that's really the thing that drives me beyond that. It's realizing my dream. You know, it's taking that passion, that vision that I have and making it happen. And one of the best things was, you know, tucking my daughter in one night and she said, um, how old do I have to be to come work for you? And what (gasps) job will you give me? (laughs) And then she says, don't worry, mom, I'll take over biz op solved, you know, for you. And, you know, I realized in that moment, first of all, this idea that I could leave a legacy of my business to my daughter. I mean, it's not a fit for her per se. She's, (laughs) she's got a different set of skills. Um, But to be able then even to answer her and say, you know, we could create a business for you. That's something that you like more and realizing she is now growing up to believe and think Mm -hmm. as a woman, I can just create a business if I want to, if I need to. And I think that in and of itself is a measure of success. Um, So I will have to say that no matter how hard things get, I love what I do. Dom, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. And, and it shows it shows, you know, the passion and the heart and the enthusiasm you have for your work. It's like, it's from my perspective, like it's a joy to watch you just 
thrive and like struggle and thrive and struggle and go through those emotions because that's what it takes. That's what it takes to live a dream that you have. Only you can do it. Yeah. It's your vision. And so like you're an inspiration uh, to see and to watch and, you know, I'll continue cheering you on from, from my side of the world. And yeah, Sarah, Thank I, thank you. I heart you. <laughs> you're awesome. <laughs> oh, I heart you too. Absolutely. So, so Sarah, how do people get in touch with you? Where do, where do you hang out on the internet? Um, yeah. How do, how do they, how do they connect? So I tend to hang out, uh, on my website, uh, which is bizopsolve.com, uh, with actually one S so B I Z O P S O L V E D.com. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then obviously also connecting through you connecting through oh, LinkedIn. Awesome. I like to post things on LinkedIn and, um, uh, help make business operations of value creation more accessible and fun mm-hmm. as a topic. Um, but I, I just, I love to help promote business owners and I try to be very generous with my time as well. So, awesome. well, there you have it. Everyone, yeah. Sarah Hardery. Sarah, thank you again so much for being on the show. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. 